Set before the events of the Abbott family, A Quiet Place Day One takes place in New York City with a brand new set of characters, for the most part. But is it quieter? Is it placier? I'm gonna let you know in a spoiler-free review right now. Lupita plays Samira, or as she's often referred to in the movie, Sam. She has a problem. And no, I'm not talking about the aliens that are about to swoop in and make a mess of things. She's got cancer. And all she wants to do with the little bit of time left on this planet is get a good damn slice of pizza. She lives in New York. It shouldn't be that difficult. It turns out to be incredibly difficult, though, because there's an alien invasion happening. Joining her in this misadventure is Eric, a chips are down kind of guy who has panic attacks. He's not the easiest dude to have as a sidekick, but he means well. And he's going to make a mighty fine tales to her Sonic, a Luigi to her Mario, as they hunt down that perfect slice of za just before the world comes to an end. The premise sounds simple, and it very much is, but the execution's on point. This is an hour, 40 minute film. It goes by like that. It gets in and out. It hits all the beats. And I was a fan of this film. The main character for me in this film, though, is Frodo, a tuxedo cat who's, appropriately enough, on a journey. He's a service animal for Sam, gonna be along for the ride for the most part. They even spend a couple minutes just focusing on Frodo, what he's up to moving around the city, skulking out some food and whatnot. I love that. I wanted that to be longer. That was my favorite section of the movie. Overall, I think this movie got the assignment, though. It's PG-13, it's pretty harmless for the most part, I'd say a whole family affair. There is some thrills, there's some scares, not really any gore, there's some blood splattered on the wall, but for the most part, this is a safe one that I think younger ages can go, maybe 9 or 10 and up. And the aliens are back. If you're not familiar with A Quiet Place, I highly recommend it. It's a solid movie. I like the sequel, too. Some people are a little sour on that one. I, yeah, it's kind of a retread, but I enjoy this post-apocalyptic world. I enjoyed the Abbott family. I was a little concerned about getting away from them and starting a new storyline, but taking it from the perspective of a New Yorker at ground level and getting the chaos unfolding, that did sound very exciting. And I loved the opening of A Quiet Place 2 when we got that from a suburban standpoint, the chaos unfolding, the, the bedlam, it was, it was great. And so we get a lot more of that here. They even could have pushed it, I think, to the extreme. They kept it mainly grounded, though. That doesn't mean there aren't some great set pieces. There absolutely are. There is tension, not as much as there was on the farm, but there's small doses of it. A person getting trapped under a car as the tires are starting to go out, being in a sewer system, trying not to drown while there's one of those alien clicker things chasing after them. Missiles flying across the city. Blowing the shit out of things while our lead protagonist is just trying to run to freedom, to safety. Had a bit of Tom Cruise War of the Worlds going on with a lower budget than that one did. But I think it executed it just as well. Now, like I said, it's just over an hour and a half, which I love. I like when it's a simple premise and it makes good use of that without lollygagging. There, however, are a couple moments that felt very kind of slow and monotonous, and I wish they would have maybe trimmed it up a little bit more or sped some of those scenes up because it's just not that interesting. The story is super basic, so we're really just sitting with these characters and their emotions, and it's not very compelling stuff by any means. It's things we've seen a million times over. People might have a problem with the fact that this doesn't really expand or explain the lore at all. <laughs> There's one moment where they do something different with the creatures. They go a little bit further into maybe the food supply, but otherwise... There's just not a whole lot here that's explaining things any further than we got in the last two Quiet Place movies. It very much is still not knowing why these aliens are here, what their goal is. It's all very much the first act of an X-Files movie. We get all the questions. It's a J.J. Abrams mystery box and we never really get to see much inside. And that might be a downer for some. I'm kind of cool with them not really going into the explanations. I like Cloverfield for that same reason. Let me dig through it a little bit. Let me rummage through the garbage, find posters, notes, little letters or whatever in the background that kind of unfold things further, but keep it kind of mysterious. 
That's what's interesting to me. I posted an out of theater reaction on this movie. I said I enjoyed it. I don't think it's as good as the last two movies, but I do think it's a good serviceable addition. Someone said something to the effect of it's a Quiet Place DLC. I think that's pretty appropriate. It's like an expansion pack when you saw the other ones. This is just an added on bonus. Doesn't quite feel like its own big movie. It's just kind of a nice companion piece to the other two. Even though it is completely separate as far as the Abbots not being involved at all and it being a prequel. It is definitely its own self-contained movie, but it doesn't feel like it has its own legs. It's still married to what came before it and you're getting a lot more of the same that you've already seen. Yes, the location's different, which makes it unique in that aspect, but there's nothing here that's like, wow, this was so different than what I've already seen. Very much is a companion piece. Now I do have a big hang up, but I don't actually know if it's the fault of the movie or if it's the fault of the Regal Theater I was at. I'm starting to think it's the latter, not the former. The screen, the visuals were like 20% darker than they should be. It was kind of hard to see what was going on. There was not a lot of contrasting shots. It was kind of flat at times. And I think it has to do with the projector. I saw it on this Regal's probably gonna go out of business. And unfortunately it's the only one near my location. Not a good situation for me as a movie critic, but that's what I have to work with. I did see it in RPX. So it was their best screen, but I've heard that they've had a hard time kind of keeping up with the uh, maintenance on these things, you know, because they don't have any money. So I'm not gonna knock it for that. I'm just gonna say tread lightly as far as the visuals are concerned. If you have a hard time seeing darker pictures, you might wanna make sure the theater you see it at is up to par, up to code with the, the modern films coming out. Because this is a Quiet Place movie, it can also be a really hard situation for many people going to the movies because there's a lot of distraction. People opening bags of chips. <sighs> Um, uh, queso's drinking a bunch of soda loudly. <laughs> Rappers <laughs> crinkling. <laughs> Kids running up and down the aisles. <laughs> There's a lot of variables at play here. Thankfully, I had a good movie going experience. There weren't a ton of people in there and they were all very invested for day one. But maybe plan ahead. If you have a theater where you're picking your seats, if you see a lot of them are filled up, maybe avoid. Maybe go to an early showing or a really late showing. Weed out all the riffraff that could be there. Because it is a quiet place, there's good chunks of section where it's very silent. It's like a silent film at times. There is a lot more noise in this one than the other ones because we have all the chaos happening on the streets. There's some good music in this one. Uh, overall, yeah, it's just a very competently made movie that's not gonna blow you away, I don't think. But I also think it's gonna entertain you and that's what I look for when I go to a movie like this. There's no like huge scary moments or anything that are gonna give the kids nightmares. In fact, some of the alien design at times comes off a little faker, I thought, than the last two movies. It, it's, it goes back and forth as far as the special effects are concerned. Sometimes they look absolutely realistic, amazing. Other times, maybe could have taken another pass at the rendering. Overall though, this is a solid entry, really like A Quiet Place 1, 2, and now the prequel, and I'm excited for what else they can bring to the table. Hopefully, they keep it unique, they keep telling new perspectives, maybe give us little bits and nuggets with each one of these films without giving away the entire game, because then you're left with really nothing left. I, I like the mystiqueness of this. Let me know if you like this, if you saw the movie, if you even knew it was out or existed at all. I know some people are having a problem with that depending on what the algorithm feeds them. Please like the video, comment and subscribe. I post movie reviews and commentary every single week on the channel. Would love to have you stick around. All right, take care.